Just really hope that I have not ruined their bond. I'll use the aquarium to clean it. Just the instinct to do that. I'm expecting some spawning activity within the next month. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the Neal Emperor Logos Simulus. I'm gonna be moving them out of their quarantine tank finally and into their brand new aquarium. So I'm gonna show you how I set that up and what they look like now. And guys, just a quick reminder that I now have an Instagram account, Jason Cichlids. The link is in the description of this video as well as the pinned comment. So if you'd like more regular updates about what's happening in the fish room, a look at photos I've taken of my fish throughout the years as well as sneak peeks into upcoming videos, make sure you're following me on Instagram. So let's get into this week's video. This tank is getting redone and we're going to be putting in the Simulus, the Nail Lampologa Simulus, uh, all the Brevis Sunspot. I'm not sure which breeding pair or trio I'm going to put in here. The Brevis are a breeding trio, the Simulus, uh, I'm pretty sure are a breeding pair. Well, what I have done is I've murkied up the water, I've taken all, obviously taken all the fish out of this tank first of all, murkied up all the water, sucked all that water out so I can try and clean this gravel as much as possible before I put it into storage. Emptied that water out of the aquarium. Now I'm going to take this gravel out, I'm going to scoop it up with one of these uh, scrapers and pop it in the bucket. Now, oh, I don't want the gravel in that bucket, uh, so I'm going to just store it in, this pl in the plastic bag that is in the bucket. So it's best to put the bucket in the aquarium so you don't spill the gravel everywhere, because you are going to spill some, and just pop it in. Simple as that. Okay, all the gravel's out, so it's in that bucket. Now all I need to do is add some full filter sand to the aquarium, fill it up with fresh water that has Tanganyika Lake Buffer in it, so the water is nice and hard and has high pH. Wait a while, about a week, let everything settle down, put some sponge filters in here. The sponge filters are already preceded from my son, so that's not a problem. I theoretically could add fish in this aquarium straight away, but I'll let the discoloration of the water from the full filter sand, the cleanliness from that, uh, go. So here's my bucket of full filter sand. Oh, ready to go. So I'm going to put it in here and some of it obviously not the whole bucket. Uh, put it in the tank, rinse it in the tank, empty the tank back out into the garden and then fill it up again. So I'm just using a regular coffee mug, skip the pull filter sand straight in. Next thing is to add water to this aquarium. I can't remember if this full filter sand is clean or not. No big deal if it's not, I'm gonna clean it in the aquarium. Right, so I'm gonna fill up the aquarium now. So it doesn't matter if this, if this sand is dirty. I'll use the aquarium to clean it. This pool filter sand has been used in aquarium before. So stir it up, try and get all the sediment suspended in the water column, and then drain it, do it again until it's relatively clear. You're just killing two birds with one stone by cleaning it in the tank. So the tank's full and I'm draining it. See, there's a lot of sediment in the water. This sediment will now be removed via the siphon. Okay guys, this is the second filling. And it's going well. As you can see, the water is a lot clearer. So I've emptied this tank once, stirring up the sand still. Trying to clear up that water. And uh, I think all I need to do now is drain it after this. And fill it back up and that's it. So, two cleans. Okay, tank is draining. You can see there's no pool filter sand around this area and that's where I'm gonna keep the hose to drain the tank. What I'm also gonna do is create some peaks at the back of the aquarium so the water doesn't pull in any pockets at the back. You can get as much of the water out as possible Right now the tank is empty for a second time, so I'm going to start to fill it back up. Okay. 
Obviously, I can lessen the flow of the water into the aquarium. But like I said before, I'm not adding fish to this aquarium for a while. I'm actually going to add the Tanganyika Rift Lake Salt Buffer now. Water looks pretty clear. Open the hose a bit more. The hose is fully open now. Get this tank filled up as quickly as possible. So here's the sole I use. It's by a company called Fish Keeper's Choice. They don't sponsor me. I've purchased this on my own accord. That's obviously made the water murky. <laughs> but uh, it will dissolve towards the over the next week and then I'll add the fish. Right, so the tank is full. And you can see I've just finished filling it up. And this little crater here from where the water was going into the aquarium. You see how murky the water is? Not bad at all. Uh, two washers added the buffer, the Lake Tanganyika buffer, to the water. That has contrib contributed to the cloudiness of the water, but that's okay. And uh, there's actually uh, condensation forming on the front pane of glass. This water is at about eight degrees right now from my garden hose. So again, need to let that uh, increase to equilibrium with the rest of the fish room, which runs at around 26 degrees. So what I'm gonna do now is move this around, level it out a bit. Doesn't have to be nice and even, whatever. Tanganyika and Cichlids, the shell dwellers, they're gonna do their own thing, no matter what I do to this aquarium. They like to dig, they like to excavate, and uh, yeah, just might point out that the reason why I leveled out the sand when I first put it in the aquarium without the water was to see how much sand I was adding into the aquarium. That's how I clean my gravel. I use the tank uh, to do it. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can use a bucket or whatever you want to use. Uh, I just use a tank, killing two birds with one stone. Pop all the sand in, in the tank, clean it up in the tank. Uh, don't scratch your glass while you do that. And drain it, refill it, drain it, refill it. You can see how clear it's getting as you do it. So what I'm going to do now is treat the aquarium with dechlorinator. So tomorrow I'll add in the sponge filters once the aquarium is a lot warmer than it is now. The thermometer is saying 8.5 degrees Celsius. And here's the brand new tank the Neil Amprologus Simulus are going to go into. Now I've got to say the aquascape isn't all that inspiring. Uh, this is a shell dwelling cichlid tank and it's, I've kept it quite simple as you see there's just a few rocks in the background. Uh, those rocks are purely there to hold the sponge filters in place. I'm going to catch a Simulus now and pop them in the aquarium. I'm just hoping that I'll just have to put my hand in the tank, they'll dive into some shells, I'll pull those shells out with the Simulus in the shells and just pop the shells in this aquarium. So it should be as easy as that, I should not need a net. So one of the Simulus went straight into the shell, and now what I'm doing is taking an air bubble out and put into the shell. So I'll just spin, it, spin the shell around and try to get the air bubble out. So I cover the top of the shell the palm of my hand to prevent the similar from jumping out. So that shell's in there. The other similar didn't go into a shell, so I might need a net. The other similar is still in the aquarium. Uh, I believe it's the female, but you can see here, similar is starting to come out of the shell. The shell here. And I believe that's the male similar, it's the larger of the two. sitting on the shell and it's seeing its brand new frame for the first time. And what the similars will do now as they get more comfortable with the aquarium, especially once I put the other one in here, they'll explore their aquarium, they'll move the shells around, they'll bury some, they'll uh, move them to where they want them and dig uh, like crazy. So this tank is going to look very different in the next 24 to 48 hours as they have to escape it the way they want it to be. Okay, I've managed to net out the female. Didn't have to move any rocks or shells around in the aquarium. So, first things first, make sure the lids are closed. These guys can jump. They're both in here now, kind of scared by me moving that lid, but they'll settle in. So it's the next day, and I'm not sure if there's been any change to the aquascape in this aquarium. You can see the similis on the right of the aquarium, the male hovering above one shell, the female towards the back hovering above another shell there. 
Uh, to be honest with you guys, I don't think there is any change to the aquascape, although I haven't reviewed yesterday's footage, so there might be some shells that have been moved around and maybe a slight change in the uh, pull filter sand, the way it's been moved around, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it just doesn't look like there's been much activity in this aquarium. But I have noticed that the Similis, the female was hanging around uh, the back of the aquarium by herself with the male close to the front of the aquarium when I first turned the lights on. Now that the lights are on, they are closer than I have seen them uh, since they've been in this tank. Uh, when they were with the Alto Lamprologus compressorceps in the quarantine tank, they were pretty much sharing the same shell. Now uh, they seem to be roaming around the tank a little bit more uh, and not spending as much uh, time close together. I'm not sure if I break the bond by moving them in this, into this aquarium, but I am sure over the coming weeks, or I hope, uh, a bit biased with that uh, assumption, that they will uh, reform their bond, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I've put them in an, a nice position where I have easy access to see them, uh, where they were in the quarantine aquarium, I had to use my stepladder to go up to the tank and see them. So here, I'll be able to film and um, watch them with my uh, chair without having to use a ladder to see them. Uh, it be much more easier to view them. So I'm really, really hoping for some spawning activity soon. It would be nice to see and I'd really love to share that with you guys, uh, my experience breeding the Neolamprologus similis. So they're looking quite nice. At the moment, uh, their fins are nice, wide and open. And yeah, I just really hope that I have not ruined their bond. But uh, we'll see in the coming weeks what happens with those guys. Just over a week since I put them in here and it's pretty obvious now that you can see some digging activity has occurred. Some of the shells have been turned over. So uh, it prevents competition moving in nearby these guys. It's just their instinct to do that with shells they're not using. And they are pretty much predominantly at the back right of the tank where you see them now. Uh, the male still kind of chases the female around, however their bond is still forming and uh, she hasn't ripened up yet but I expect her to ripen up with a lot of eggs over the next week or two. Um, her gut isn't fully developed yet but uh, yeah I'm expecting some spawning activity within the next month I would suppose. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, they are kind of courting but surely uh, I'm gonna see some uh, fry swimming in and out of these shells in the next uh, few weeks. So I am looking forward to that. But as you can see, it's taken at least a week for them to settle in uh, and uh, start that, their digging activity and um, feeling comfortable in the tank and pushing over those shells to prevent uh, predators and uh, competition moving in near their, near their chosen spot. So pretty happy with that. It's fun to see their little characteristics, their little, their little quirks and what, how they behave in the wild. This is what they would do. They would turn the shells over. You know, they're, kind of, they're, they're, they're very small cichlids, one of the smallest cichlids in the world, and they are pretty strong for their size. They're able to turn shells over and dig to no end. So uh, it's interesting to watch that behavior. If you are interested in Tanganyikan cichlids, I highly recommend that you try the much more commonly found Neolamprologus multifasciatus. Uh, they look very, very similar to these guys, very similar, hence the name Similis with this species. They don't grow as large as Similis and multifasciatus are better parents with their fry. And the fry look after their younger siblings as well. So they really do form a colony. We'll see how these guys go. But so far, so good. Seeing the digging activity and hopefully some spawning activity in the next few weeks. So there you have it guys, the Neal Amprologus in their brand new home. Really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.